Okay, now that we have stacked our image or our files together for one image, let's go ahead and open it up. I have it set to do the um, high rejection, low rejection. You can just delete those. I just like to look at them to see what the differences were. Um, in this video, we're going to show how to use screen transfer function, uh, dynamic crop, dynamic background extraction, background neutralization, and color calibration. Uh, the first thing we do is do our screen transfer function to be able to see. It just shows us a, a complete stretch. Um, this icon here is a, you know, a quick link to it. If you're not sure where it is, you go to Process Explorer under All Processes. If it's not in your favorites already, you can find, find it in All Processes, right click on it, and do Add to Favorites. Screen Transfer function, you double click on the icon and it'll come up here. Um, this one up here was very similar. All you do is you click on this and it'll do the stretch that we just saw. After you do your screen transfer function stretch, uh, it'll show you any issues that you might have with the stacking and stuff like that, artifacts, and we want to remove them before doing any processing. So now that we did the stretch, we're going to do a crop. Um, as you can see, I've got a gradient here, um, so I'm going to try to cut that out. So what we'll do is, I always like to take a little bit of the edge just to be in a, so it's not as much just in case there's any issues and just hit the check mark and it'll go and do its crop for you all right let's close out the dynamic crop and next thing we're going to do is the dynamic background extraction dbe for short double click on it again if you don't find it in your favorites sometimes it's already there if not find it in all processes right click and add to favorites because these are your main pro main things that you'll do when you're first starting out. So we click on our image, you'll get the cross there. Um, DBE will automatically set up the default radius and, and rows. Uh, you can generate it. Generate this. Uh, hit the generate button and it'll show you the little boxes. Um, as you can see, the little boxes aren't everywhere. So what we need to do is change our sample weight. We're going to reduce it down to five. I do two tenths every time. That's just me. And as you can see, it added. Uh, gotta love these funky video capturing things sometimes. As you can see, it added the, the squares we wanted. We didn't have one here, so we're going to just add one. Because we don't want it on the bright stars. And we also don't want it in our galaxies or nebula. So what you do is you click on it, which will highlight it. As you can see, it's a yellow, kind of hard to see. And you just click delete, and it will delete it out of there. And sometimes you want to remove them from the faint nebulas or nebulas that is there. Sometimes uh, if you've got too much of a gradient, and you try doing the sample weight down to like two or one, sometimes that won't work, it won't give you enough of the uh, samples. So what you need to do is up your tolerance. Um, I've gone as high as 2.1 for my tolerances, and then you generate it, and you'll get your squares. Um, then what you want to do is go and do a subtraction, and we just click and drag it get two images one be in the background and one be in the new image um, what I like to do is I just like to view what the background was as you could see the old image had a lot of red so this pulled all the red out and what we're gonna do is close this out minimize this and here's our new image again we're gonna do a screen transfer again and now you can see we've got a, a pretty decent image here. I'm going to run the dynamic background one more time because sometimes it'll pull the background but then you'll ha still have a gradient. Uh, 
There we go. And I just gotta delete the ones that are in my picture. I know Warren Kelly has a, a or Keller has a great tutorial. Harry uh, Harry has a great tutorial also. Um, I just have this because a friend of mine couldn't quite understand Harry and didn't like Warren because Warren kind of talks slow. But you know, to each their own. And one more stretch. As you can see, those again still issues with the background. So we're going to close this out. And I'm just going to remove that one and we're going to do another screen stretch again. This time I'm going to unlink them. When you unlink the chain here, what this does is it goes and keeps all your colors exactly the same. So when you unlink it and do the stretch, it gives you kind of a more natural look to it. And it actually has more of a reddish tint to it. I want to see if I do a dynamic crop or a dynamic background again if it'll pull that red out or not. And this is something interesting because I just learned about that uh, that that uh, linking. So we'll remove that subtraction. It might change it, it might not, so we'll see. Nope, still red, so I'm just going to keep the original one that I had. Close, close, close. Alright, now, since we did that, we want to do a background neutralization to get a neutral background. Background neutralization, and what we want to do is a preview. So you can either come up here to preview and do new preview or you can do alt n and it'll give you the box so you can create your uh, your preview. Um, I like to do region of interest. You can do the reference. Um, I guess it's just your choice. E -E. I, yeah, I have other images up right now on another screen as you can see you got four works work surfaces that you can work from and what you do is you just go and drag it and with that done we'll, leave, we'll close that out and we're gonna do the last thing color calibration I'm gonna leave that preview up because we're gonna use that as our background reference and now we want to do our white reference which is either our galaxy or our nebula and as you can see as I move the mouse around down on the bottom right below down here you'll see numbers change for our GMB and in our white reference we want to make sure that you know our lower limit is as high as the highest number we see um, and this one is the red 5-2. We want to be sure we're not near any stars. So, try to find some spots. Uh, it looks like 4, 4-5. Four, Let's go 4-5. And I like to have the output masks for um, the white and the background. Because <clears throat> you, with your background, you want to have it white with the black stars. We want to make sure we have that. And my white is too much. So what I'm going to do is, and it threw the coloring off on me. So that's why you got to kind of mess around. Undo it, redo it. Sometimes it might be a, a slight change. See, and that's still not good. Oh, I know why. Because I've got these reversed. Helps if I do these the correct way.
You know what? I'm just going to close this out because it's causing an issue. Yep, okay. I apologize for that. And as you can see, it's you're starting to see that, but we want the our galaxy or nebula white and the rest of this a darker color. So I'm going to bump that up to five. Undo what I just did. Try again. That's closer, but I'm going to try again. A lot of this is, is just trial and error and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Everyone is different on their images because their images are going to look a little different. And as you can see, it's getting darker, and I've got more of the nebula here. And you can see that the colors are becoming more blue and red instead of the aqua and you know red. As you can see, it's kind of fainter. And it helps organize the uh, or get your coloring the correct way. And that's it for this one.